All right, it is now time to head to the final stretch of episode P3 in Persona 4 Rain Ultimax as we finish up chapter 9 here. And that just takes us to the home stretch, and then we're going to finish out with Labrys here and all her stuff, because that her whole line goes all the way down to the bottom, and then that'll be the end of this episode. And then I believe once we clear it, we'll get the, like, true ending epilogue or whatever. So, yeah. Let's dive right in. The five of us who had been entrusted with pursuing Shokun are proceeding towards the top of the tower. How many floors have we climbed already? Distorted hallways and classrooms appear at every turn. There's no sign of us reaching the end. The quakes are growing more and more frequent. I guess this means the time is running out? You know, that Minazuki guy talked about making his world. But how is he going to do that? If we presume he's following in Akutsuki's footsteps, then he's going to gather shadows, merge them, and summon some great power. You mean that thing Minazuki-kun was talking about? What do you think, Junpei? I mean, you've been surprisingly quiet. Are you not feeling well? Huh? Nah, no, I'm fine. Coaches are well-trained, you know. I guess it's just that I'm feeling all tense. All this end-of-the-world stuff isn't anything to joke about. I've got people waiting for me. Like, the kids have a game coming up next week, so there's no way I can lose here. Stupe's being serious for once. Looks like he's grown up a bit. I guess I should learn from his example. <laughs> Junpei has leveled up! You don't want the world to end either, do you, Labby-chan? You just woke up after all. Yeah. I don't want to lose this world after I've met everyone. I gotta do my best. Here it goes again! Wait, didn't we see this classroom earlier? I feel like the fog's getting thicker, too. It won't be good if this keeps up. Since we can't get a communication with Fuka-san, we don't even know what's around us. No matter how far we go, the maze of the fake Yasukami High just keeps going and going. The visibility inside is getting worse as well, and we even have trouble seeing the floor at our feet. We're starting to get flustered because we have had no sense of progress at all after all this time. Come on, keep your cool. Getting all aggravated won't do us any good. You're so positive as always, Junpei-san. You think so? I think you've changed, though. You've gotten taller, too. Huh? <laughs> uh, why do you sound so relieved? Um, I've been wondering if I hadn't changed at all. I made a promise to Mitsudo-san that I'd live life like a child. What's that supposed to mean? Is that hard to do or something? It's difficult. I don't know what it's like to be a child, so I wasn't sure if I should keep doing what I've been doing. Huh. I guess being an adolescent boy is difficult. You should just live your life the way you are. I mean, <laughs> you are a kid. That's right. You can't trust Mitsuru Senpai's idea of childhood. Can you even imagine what she was like when she was a kid? Whoa, you're right, I can't. It's impossible for common people like us. Speaking of children, that show dude is the perfect example of a spoiled brat. At one moment he's joking around, and the next he's incredibly pissed off. Yeah, what would someone have to go through in order to make them seriously consider destroying the world? What happened to him? When the topic shifted to Shokun, Koromaru-san passes us by and stops, by, stops before one of the doors. What's up, Koromaru-san? Is there something bothering you about this classroom? When I approach the door that Koromaru-san is barking at, I see uh, I see stairs leading up a stairway inside the classroom. I'm sure that I wasn't the only one who was hoping that this... this uh, let me read that again. <laughs> I'm sure that I wasn't the only one who was hoping this was the place. Junpei-san quickly opens the door and we step inside. Aside from the staircase, the room seems like a normal classroom used, to, used during daily life. Desks are lined up in, a row, in rows, and a blackboard dominates the front wall. Why can't I read today? <laughs> I remember my own yearning to live a life, including places like this. Even at a time like this, I smirk a bit at myself, and just as I'm about to follow everyone to the stairway... Ah, looks like you've made it all the way here. Now what to do? 
You're General Teddy. We finally found you. General Teddy, the mastermind of this tournament. With his cape and a fearless grin, General Teddy is completely different from the real Teddy we encountered earlier. And even though the screen has an ominous air about him, I check him with my sensors just to be sure, and sure enough, he's a shadow. Hmm? No. This isn't a normal shadow reading. What in the world is this? This is getting out of hand. So I, General Teddy, will face you myself. Now bring on the ring! When General Teddy lifts his little hand up, the red pillars we're familiar with appear in the four corners of the classroom. Ugh. Excuse me. The tension running through the area pushes away the feeling I'd had a moment ago that something's wrong. In any case, I have to change my way of thinking and prepare for battle. Now, it's time to have some fun. Those who hinder the creation of my world shall all perish here. Whoa, someone's got a big mouth. My world? <laughs> this has been our world from the start. We're not just going to let you destroy it that easily. Destroy? <laughs> I will not destroy it. This will be a new beginning. The beginning of a world of my own, where only I will live. Only you? What about Sho? This doesn't concern you. The vessel will soon be complete. Nothing you can do at this point serves any purpose. We won't know that unless we try. Konamaru! Like hell we're gonna let you start anything like that! Let's take this guy down and move on! Let's see, uh... Let's go to Flabbers. Since we'll probably just be fighting his server for a while anyways. Might as well get re-familiarized with all her moves and whatnot. Not good. <laughs> Keep getting shot with missiles. Ow. Fuck off. End it quick. Gonna melt now? As Junbei saw notice, the fakes we defeated until now have lost their shapes quickly after being defeated and melted into a black ooze before disappearing completely. But this General Teddy is just as confident as he was before the battle and has the same smile. I knew it. You're different from the other fakes. Who are you? Who am I? I'm General Teddy. Who else? Well then, bye-bye, you pesky vermin! <laughs> hey! Get back here! General Teddy swirls his cape about him with a laugh and disappears, vanishing into thin air without a trace. Uh, hey, Yucatan. He said something about a vessel being completed. Wasn't that kind of suspicious? Yeah, it must mean that we don't have any time left, and when we defeated that General Teddy, he didn't disintegrate like the other fakes. There must be more to this case. 
Ken Kun is right. General Teddy is different from the fakes that we'd been running into up until now. Plus, those words he said before fighting. Minazaki Kun said he'd make his world, and Shokun talked about my world. And yet, General Teddy said. Well, he didn't say roar. And shake about the place. The quaking starts again. The blackboard and the podium rattle loudly, and some of the decorations on the wall fall down. The building shakes strongly and for a long time, as if asserting that the time is drawing near. Can you all hear me? You're very close. I'm getting a strong reading just up those stairs. When we hear Fukusan's staticky communique, communique, what? Yeah, staticky communique. We feel a sense of tension fill us. We steal ourselves and make our way up the stairs here in the classroom. 